How do you go from this to this? Hi, I'm Lawrence. We're going to go through some of my big builds step by step so you can see how I planned and made them and hopefully give you some inspiration to build big. We're going to go through step by step so you can see the process and how I plan them and make it easier for people who want to build big. Please like and subscribe if you want to see some more. Today we're going to go through my current build and I think probably the best thing I've ever built, <laughs> so, the Coronation of Gilliman. This is a piece based on an art, original artwork by the artist Pedro Nunes. I'll put his link here so you can see it and then go and follow him because his art is amazing. And it was for the Gathering Storm 40k campaign. I absolutely fell in love with this piece immediately. Uh, it, it was as I got back into the hobby and it really summed up everything that I love about Warhammer. Ridiculous aesthetic, the satirical nature of the classical art mixed with the grim dark aesthetic, all of the new characters in one place. It's all the Eldar's fault as well, which is always my jam. <laughs> so uh, I absolutely love this piece of artwork and I uh, really encourage you to go and follow the artist as well. I spent quite a lot of time looking at this piece because it was amazing and really inspired me and was part of what I felt like 40k had moved towards in the 15 year gap that I'd had. While I was gazing at it lovingly, I, re I started to notice that all the characters on the, on all the characters in the, in the artwork are based on the models themselves. So it kind of took me a while because I don't own any of these, but then I bought Celestine on a, well, I just bought Celestine for the hell of it because it's a beautiful model. And I started to see that it, he basically done the characters to scale. So why not build it? <laughs> I didn't immediately set out to, to do it because I didn't know if it was if it was anywhere near my skill level. It's it was such a beautiful piece of work. I really wanted to be able to do it justice. I could kind of work out how to do it in my head, but the reality of my painting skills and my modeling skills weren't really uh, were, were definitely not up to the size of challenge it was. So, I had it in my head for a long time trying to work out which bits I could use for things and which things that so I created kind of I created a list of problems to solve the statues at either side of the image who all the characters were the statues above with the giant skeleton uh, all the cherubs and the the kind of muscly angels that, <laughs> that that are in the background broke it down per section to look at all the different parts of the artwork and see what pieces that I would necessarily need. I then wrote a list of all the models I'd need. It was way too expensive. Once I had the list, I could, if I found the models in job lots or on eBay for less money, if I was slightly pissed at a gaming club and thought, oh, okay, well, that, you know, it's 25% off, I'll pick that up now. So I bought a lot of stuff in Bad Moon after at the end of a game, which was stressful <laughs> when I realized how much money I've spent. Uh, but over time, I collected all the parts. So it probably was over 18 month period before I started making any part of it. I didn't really commit at the beginning because I just thought, well, these are kits are cool and I might make something else out of them instead, or I might just make the original characters. I think when I bought Gilliman, that was really the point where I was like, well, I've spent this money on him. I'm never gonna make him just as a vanilla Gilliman. Vanilla Gilliman? Gilliman? Vanilla Gilliman? I'm never gonna make him as is. I really have to now do this. I then tried to work out what's scale it was in and I tried to use some maths to be like to work out whether or not so how how big a box that I would actually need and then I got bored of that idea I'm very dyslexic it didn't come, it doesn't come naturally to me at all and so I just sort of tried to do it by eye and we'll come to that in a bit because it didn't work <laughs> so it didn't work at all I've shortlisted the bits I've started to collect them I've started to chat to my friends about it as well and especially to my friends on Instagram and one of my closest Warhammer buddies uh, Science Pie about the potential of doing this and everyone's like yeah it's completely bonkers you should definitely do it what help do you need which uh was kind of overwhelming and like wonderful but i think for a project this scale you need so many bits you need more bits than you you possibly think you possibly need and expensive so it's hard to get them all together like my friends help me out on a huge basis here sourcing me parts finding me extra imperium bits because i don't really 
make Space Marines. This is the second Space Marine model I've made. <laughs> and third? Maybe third. Maybe th I think third Space Marine model I've made. And I don't have a huge wealth of Space Marine parts. I don't have a huge wealth of Imperium bits. And really what I was going to need was millions of cherubs, as many Imperial, like uh, Aquilas as possible, candles, scrolls, purity seals, as much as possible, a bucket loads of them. And so I started to click this over time. I, one of the really key pieces of the kit was when I, uh, I picked up the Triumph and St. Catherine. And there's so many Gothic parts in that, that really that was the kind of cornerstone of building everything else, um, which I didn't really think was gonna be the case, but it did. I needed a box, which was a real struggle. I looked, I looked in lots of different places online. I eventually plumped for this wooden box with a particular diameter that I thought was right. I wanted it to be quite deep so that I could fit in a lot of depth to model and have lots of different sections and kind of work on a sort of Joseph Cornell style. So it gave the illusion of more depth than it actually had. I was very concerned about fitting in as many Marines as possible into the front of it to create a sort of crowd feeling. Like there's, there is a sort of mixture of religious art, like Jesus on the Mount <laughs> you know, kind of element to it, where you've got this kind of adoring or stunned, maybe stunned crowd, uh, staring at the back of it trawled Etsy trying to find the right statues. Now there's four main statues in this, five, six. There's six main statues in this. There are the two giant bearded men on either side that are really in darkness, quite hard to see unless you've got a very high definition picture of, uh, of the original artwork. Then you've got the two Greco-Roman uh, reclining David's so it's like uh, holding the flags at the top. You have the giant skeleton, and then you've got this kind of winged death figure in the middle. Uh, so none of those were things that that I'd seen in GW. I don't think there was there, there isn't the sculpts of them. So it was trying to match up as closely as possible to what was on the what was on the artwork. Fortunately, I feel like the artist probably used a lot of classical references, and I love classical art. <laughs> so it was great fun tracking these down. Great fun. Maybe great fun's not the right answer, right word, but it was fun tracking them, tracking them down. So for the two giant statues, I found on Etsy, Zeus and Poseidon. They're not quite right, and actually I think possibly I misjudged the scale a little bit, but like they were absolutely close enough for like, a tiny detail in the, in the part. In the, uh, Poseidon's great, his arm is exactly in the right place, it really wasn't going to be a problem. Zeus, his arm's a bit fun funky, but I just thought I could probably do something with that and uh, it was a bit of a pain, but like, uh, yeah, I thought we could probably change that, so it was fine. The top statues really bothered me for a long time. I really didn't know what to do with this. I couldn't find matches. I, mean, I, was, I could swear that I'd seen somewhere that kind of repose and you know if, if you can find the statues the original artwork is based on uh, <laughs> I'll be very annoyed at you because it, I couldn't do it. The closest I could I could find were Dawn and Dusk from the Medici tomb by Michelangelo that I'd seen in Florence years ago and the great thing about that is there's a whole project to uh, scan all these like classical and antiquity statues and buildings you can find 3d prints well 3d files online and a friend of mine very kindly printed them for me which really solved that problem and i'm very happy with the result with that i think it's probably one of my favorite parts of the model <laughs> so, that's very cool and they, they needed to get the giant skeleton i just decided not to do it i i, I found i found some 3d prints of skeletons tried it it just looked too goofy i really couldn't find one that kind of captured the, what I wanted it to look like. I felt having the Emperor sat above him, I feel like it's meant to be the Emperor in the original art anyway, or some sort of representation of him. So being able to find like a sort of Emperor sculpt was very cool. And I found this, well, and my friend suggested this one based on this piece of artwork with the severed hand and it, uh, you know, this wonderful 3D sculpt of it. And that's really kind of, I think, helped balance the model a huge amount. I also put some I also put some lots of wings in because you know wings are good <laughs> and they really make a big difference to the model. That is kind of my planning stage and this took 
a really long time. Like, I, I didn't come up with any of these ideas immediately. I was working in a different job and building other things at the same time, but always in the back of my head was how can I solve the problem? What can I find? So I like built up over time this collection of parts and kits under my bed and in a stack of boxes so that I could eventually start building it. Once I'd solved enough problems, I felt like I could now go for it. When I'm building, I almost always use a blue tack stage where I blue tack all the pieces together so I can see roughly what the shapes are, where the areas of weakness is, what, what does work and doesn't work, and then I build off that. This is really difficult to do for a model this scale because every, you just can't physically blue tack it all without every, all the bits falling off and, and also everything just gets disgusting and covered in blue tack. So the blue tacking phase was gonna be very interesting. So let's see how that goes. There's a list in the description below of all the parts I used if I can fit it all in. I'm sure I can fit it all in. And a lot of the people who helped me out with this, I will try and give everyone shout outs, but it's the number of people who've helped me with this, it, it's very hard to actually remember who everyone is. Uh, I really wish I'd written it all down. And I think in future projects, if I do get help like this, I'm definitely gonna write down every single person who's helped me because it's been amazing. But I've, I've lost track over the bit swaps and like what's going on. So I'll try and give people shout outs that, uh, I'll try and give people shout outs, but if I miss you off, I'm really sorry. Just give me a heads up and shout at me. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm so sorry, because it was it was a huge, huge collaborative effort finding all the parts for this. It really was. And so thank you so much. So I have my big pile of boxes. I have my big, big pile of bits. Here's all the kits. Uh, I then the box itself turns up, so really cool. So I, now I've got to build some of it so that I can fit. I could, I could do a dry fit and work out what fits and what doesn't. I started off by clipping everything out, which was really stupid <laughs> because I because I, I didn't couldn't find any loads of bits. I clipped everything out, as in like here's Celestine, here's Gilliman, his, and I put it all into separate boxes and made this like beautiful pile of video you can see here. A huge amount of time later. <laughs> did live stream video for this as well which was kept me going because it was incredibly boring sister Junita, erith Junita, and this triumph of saint catherine all cut into bits here also this interesting ring that i don't know i've got for like two pounds so i'm gonna try using that as well or something then you have the battle sanctum all the wings and the angel celestine i think it's celestine for the battle sanctum you then got celestine herself grayfax gilliman Captain Cassius, who I think is in it, because I can't tell because it's so obscured. Uh, I'm going to reread some of the lore soon just to double check. You then got Yvrain, Minus Kalgar, and the Victrix Guard. Who is this? Uh, uh, <laughs> cool as well. So that's cool. So tomorrow or the next couple of days, I will start to blue tack the models that need some like dry fitting or something like uh Yvrain, i'm just gonna build her because she's pretty much identical just needs some slight arm changes and i think that will make it a lot easier to fit all the things together build the frame with this build the throne with this all of the extra pieces as well going through this i think i do actually have enough hooded figures to build all of the creepy uh wing statues very excited about that so yeah really near near to to begin <laughs> actually building the thing uh let's see but there, i mean there are a lot of bits here i'm also going to use my bits collection in here and then over there all that shelving is boxes of bits as well which i'll probably end up using for this as well <laughs> this wasn't a good idea but it really got me it really got the ball rolling because every stage of this i was stuck with absolute like perfectionism par paralysis and it took a lot to get over over myself start building it start painting yeah, every section building it painting it buying the bits every single part of that has just been full of self-doubt and like worry and being like oh, i can't do this and then going to do another project and then putting it aside putting it under the bed forgetting about it doing something else getting started in any part of it was a real really helped push me to actually get it done so clipping it may be stupid but you know it worked I then built Inquisitor Greyfax with her little scroll. It was the first model I, I built. I thought, well, it's, you, 
I know exactly what she's going to look like once she's done. I don't need to worry about her at all. I think my green stuff skills are not particularly good and the scroll is a little bit shrunky, but she's such a small part of it, it doesn't really matter. I then built Celestine because I felt like I could see exactly how she was laid out with her wings at a different angle. So her wings are very much parallel to each other. So they don't fit onto her back. So I had to extend her back slightly. I put it as a little bit messy as well. Then positioning her arms so she's holding the iron halo was an absolute nightmare. Trying to straighten out like little stubby arms at any different angles very difficult i have got a lot of sisters battle and elder arms i think i gave her like an elder arm to hold it I'm not 100 percent sure i can't remember what i really what, what i saw on the, the what i saw on the artwork was that celestine and grayfax are like layered together so i made sure that they were almost like one piece because really that it gives a solid foundation to where gilliman sits now gilliman himself you may notice I didn't start with Gilliman. That is because the fear was real that I couldn't make him look right. I knew that he was, uh, his pose is very dynamic. His torso is twisted to one side. He's not sitting down. <laughs> like, on the other hand, he, you know, his power fist, power, his power fist is nicely proportioned and I think was like, looked like it could quite easily be sat on one side. So the thing that I wanted to get to make look right was that his arms would be outstretched. They'd be holding onto the eagles and that would, really kind of push the rest of the model forwards. Leg wise, I was hoping there weren't too many sections so that I could basically vivisect them and then sit, fit them together. There wasn't really anything that special about your frame. Her arms are in a very different position, kind of clasped in front of her, but the, the general silhouette is exactly the same as the model so I just built her kind of as is. Uh, I think I didn't give her any arms to begin with because I wanted to make sure that they look right once I got everything, to, uh, everything together. So I just left those off. I put a couple of the background custodies together as well. I'd never built any custodies so I just fancied it and they, they were kind of plain. I didn't really have to do very much. I had to alter the arms slightly. I gave them a couple of extra cogs as well just to hide some of the joins and positioning. I'm quite happy with those. It just wasn't because it's not such a big... And then with Gilliman himself, blue tacked his torso together, his head, one arm, and like a bit of some sort of undercarriage so that I could get a sense of where he would sit and what I could do with him. Uh, I'm still very hesitant at this point. I really didn't want to cut the model. I didn't want to have to buy a new one. And I wanted to make sure that he was going to look right before I did anything else. And I used the Sister of Battle Basilica or something, the Basilica kit so that you've got this nice big ornate gothic background backdrop to the whole thing that when you look through it, it's going to give some extra depth you don't have to have every single piece of detail because it gives a sense of depth this didn't work i'll tell you about that later so put it all together in the box and it looked stupid uh, like it didn't work the dimensions were completely wrong uh it was too sh it was too short it was too, it wasn't wide enough, and actually it was too deep. <laughs> so on every count it failed. The models looked cramped together. It really wasn't, it, it didn't have that sense of grandeur that the artwork has. It would have been okay, but I needed something bigger. I went back onto Etsy spent uh, and eBay and spent ages trying to find another box and managed to find this box that was not as deep, but wider and taller. Uh, the exact dimensions are somewhere. And it, looked much better so i put all the bits together put some, put everything that i i'd collected and so this is the stage where i got to where i really felt confident now that i could build coronation of Gilman. <laughs> so i have to mention this point by one of my bits dealers uh, it's a guy called Robert Mitchell, who's a competitive gamer, and he has got a lot of armies and doesn't kit bash that much. So we worked out a deal where I, he commissioned me to make something and I'll do it in return for bags and bags and bags of parts. And that has been so helpful because getting enough tank panels to kind of flesh out large pieces is really very difficult and expensive. He's given me like a huge number of parts I wouldn't normally use. And a lot of these are used on the base section so that I would have 
uh, lots of interesting kind of like imperial mechanisms and give it that industrial feel. I wanted to have a mixture of gothic up top and then industrial technolo technological underneath. So you've got lots of weird pipes and pa panels and gubbins and whatnot. Friend the Void Winds had also sent me a 3D printed Jacaro that he'd sculpted. I absolutely love this. Uh, I love Jacaro in law. It's just absolutely hysterical. If you don't know, they are basically <laughs> space orangutans. There's a really interesting theory that uh, the, the the librarian in Discord novels is actually a Jokero because he's gone through L space and yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love this stuff. But they yeah, they are basically a race of almost interdimensional engineers that are left over from some previous civilization, I think, and they have like better technology than anyone else in 40k, which is absolutely fantastic. Well, it, you know, if you come across like digital weapons, there are usually Jokero digital weapons, and they have these like bizarre shit. Uh, I really wanted to put a piece of that artwork, a piece of that lore in this model. I didn't just want to make exactly what the artwork is. It's tucked away in the very bottom corner so you can hardly see it. Now, incredibly annoyingly, when I was when I was base coating it, I did base coat this section a bit too heavily and I lost some of the detail on it, but it's, you know, it's almost invisible. So I'm going to see if I can rescue that while I'm painting it. I used a highly technical method to reposition the arms of the statue using a hammer to smash a bit of the model so <laughs> to smash its arm off so that I can reposition it. I left Zeus's arm for a really long time because I didn't want to mess it up and we'll see how that went later <laughs> later on. But once I had these two statues that was something that I could stop thinking about. I knew where they were going to be positioned on the model and I could build things around them. Um, I started building the model. I really went hard on the detail in the base. Uh, probably because it was something that's going to be mostly obscured and it was quite a lot of pure fun to build. I also put in the base of the throne, which is the base section from the Triumph of St. Catherine. I cut like two uh, bits of the base off at the, at the sides so, and then I could just bend it up so that it fit behind. I think it's a really nice like detail and it, it kind of helped pop Gilliman out slightly from the background. I got this brass plate from our old job when we were throwing out rubbish and I think it could has a really nice texture on it and unfortunately you can't really see it in the rest of the model and actually was kind of in the way but I thought you might be able to see some of the reflection through through from it but in the end you didn't have to. I then started work on Gilliman himself so I bisected the model so I cut every single join and this meant I could reassemble him while sitting up. Now he doesn't he isn't really complete <laughs> uh, so he doesn't have a back back part of it I left off. Uh, he doesn't really have an arse either. Uh, what it is essentially it fix him to the chair rather than have him stick out too much. Now so with a model like this when I'm building a model like this I'm always thinking about what it's going to look like from only a couple of different positions. It really doesn't matter if the model, if the if the full model doesn't exist, as long as there's no part of it that you can see that there's a problem. If you can't make a join or if you can't fit something in perfectly, just leave it out. As long as as long as it's not visible from, from when you're seeing it from the front. And now I know there's a sense of that there's that tradition in painting that you paint the things that no one else is ever going to see, and it gives you a sense of com completion. That is one way of doing it and I really admire it. It's a very intense way of painting that I can't personally do and I find it quite stressful. Uh, but it really doesn't work if you're trying to make a diorama fit nice and neatly together. If you're, if you're trying to make it have a sense of depth and feel real, the relationship between all the different objects, it's not worth thinking about having the model complete. It's better to have the old, the overall aesthetic look right. The old, over, it's better to have the overall look of the model look right than it is to have the model itself be perfect. Once I'd laid out all the different pieces, it looked fantastic. I could really work it out. I, I couldn't. I didn't quite know what to do with one of the arms because he's got a big giant flaming sword in it. Uh, I thought I'd just find a power fist from somewhere. I tried to use a power fist from the Servitor Ogrins 
because I, I, it was quite a cool one and I, I thought it might be it might fit the shape but actually it was way too big and I ended up using a power fist from a Tartarus Terminator kit instead. So once Gilliman was mostly built I could then really start to position the characters around him and work out what they were going to look like and wh which bits I had to make sure were visible in the scene and to fit everything around. Now if I built this again I would build the whole backdrop first and then I would do the characters afterwards. Uh, building around them was a bit of a pain and it didn't perfectly work in each section so it's uh, <laughs> something that uh, it's always easy to build a model a second time. Building from scratch you're problem solving the whole way through. To realise that what I said was actually complete rubbish <laughs> because although I don't paint for things that aren't seen I do build for things that aren't seen. Maybe because I don't always know if they're going to be seen or not. I built behind each of the statues and I went incredibly ham on them. I think because I was trying to feel my way through the model and see what it what my interpretation of it was going to look like I really liked including lots of, uh, sort of weird greebling so I went into way too much detail on both these uh, both these back corners you're probably never going to see but it was really fun and it got me used to the feel that I was going to use for the rest of the build so yeah it's completely worth it <laughs> uh, I then used some green stuff to give Sidon a robe because you can sort of see in the original artwork that he's got this huge he's holding this huge flag and the flag is sort of draped over him as well it's kind of hard to tell but I, think, I thought the robe was quite good uh, this is me attempting some green stuff work I really hate working with it because I don't have the patience to get it completely smooth and I'm not super happy with the finish but it's okay so and it's going to be black so it's not the end of the world and then needed to make the Ultramarines logo I hadn't really planned for this I tried to find some templates online really Really struggled for it. I, I ended up just taking, getting a picture, trying to basically freehand, <laughs> trying to freehand like the exact shape of it. I basically freehanded it, then made a basket card shape of it. It really didn't work. I also got the scale wrong. It just was too big and too small. Uh, I traced some of it to get to off off the original image on my laptop to try and get the right the right depth to it and like all this right shape. That kind of worked a little bit better, but then the it's such a key part of the model and it really had quite a rough edge so it didn't look that great. Fortunately, the void wind stepped in and printed me one off and sent it to me and it fit completely perfectly and really just absolutely saved the model completely. So thank you mate. Behind the Ultramarines logo there's this scroll work that's sort of interlocking sections of it. I didn't quite nail this. I think I cut out all these different spears, plastic cards so that there was something sharp that it looked like this kind of sword effect going on the outside and scroll work on the inside. So I think okay it was the best I could do and yeah it kind of works. You can see here some of my, my wire work this is my absolutely favorite uh, hobby tool which is copper or aluminium wire it's super bendy you can and you can change it to different shapes it holds its position as well I can really recommend getting this because uh, yeah I think it costs like $14.99 and pff, I built so much stuff out of this and I've still got quite, still got quite a lot more so yeah some good behind Gilliman and just above it there is this mixture of scroll work cherubs muscled statues this was going to be a really really kind of core piece for me I need to work out how to do it I wanted to like vary the textures as much as possible sourcing parts for it I looked a lot for like bare torsos and it was cry for pain. I keep getting everyone's names mixed up just continuously. I'm very sorry. <laughs> He sent me this kit of Picts, sort of the Iceni tribe warriors with spears and they really kind of like had the right silhouette like that I was looking for. So I used their torsos, lots of different wings and then I started uh, producing, mass producing cherubs. Now this was really fun, I, I, I love this section of it. Chatting to Hyrulis Lost, one of his hobby techniques is to use cake moulds with either green stuff or I use, I really like using Das modelling clay, mostly because you get a large volume for not very much money it also can have like quite a nice crumbly texture which I find really good for statues and for stones and for like ancient bits of broken thing I used a mixture of cake molds of cherubs GW cherub models 
various different wings, quite a lot of Blood Angel wings. I, w I really didn't want to, for it look repetitive over the same model or for it to be easily identifiable as specific parts because in the original artwork it's it's something unusual. I put these together, each one of them was great fun, like um, especially like the sort of the, the cherub that looks particularly sad. Um, <laughs> so I gave them extra halos using copper blanks, hobby material that I use, uh, use often for halos. Uh, some of them have got shoulder pads, some of them some of them are carrying books as well. This was yeah so this was really fun so I made about I made about 25 of these and then kind of positioned them throughout the model to try and work out which would work in the best part I also found that I had some really cool little bits on the Delac kit one of my favorite kit bashing kits and I used this mixed with some of the Triumph of St. Catherine to create this angel figure that I was super proud of I almost didn't put it on the model because I liked it so much and I just thought this is a really cool little part of the kit bash it's not quite the original scale that's on the artwork but I feel like the way that I positioned it so that it's really pushed forwards creates a lot of depth to the model as well. While I was assembling this, I realized that leaving the blank disc behind it didn't really work. You had to kind of, that it would look better the more detail there was. So once I positioned the angels, I used a mixture of skulls, robes, cogs from my collection of watch parts. And that was, you know, just to kind of keep layering it. So little pipes, uh, all this different extra stuff. And you can see kind of what I did difficult job it was assembling all of these pieces but once I had this 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 solid backdrop it really gave me I knew what I wanted to build or like how I wanted the rest of the model to look I was quite concerned that it would probably that it might overwhelm the whole piece and that it would all end up looking uh, too much but you know more is more, so happy with it. Then got the 3D printed sculpts of Dawn and Dusk. These sat so nicely on top of the model. I tried a few different ways of positioning it with Quiller at the back backdrop as well, which I also made of DAS modeling clay and a cake mold. From the point I started building it, this has been all of November, November and December, and now I'm coming into February and it's still taking some time, and then suddenly it's March and it's Smash Bash time, so I made this. Ta -da! I love Smash Bash as a competition and it was interesting going from one large project to another large project at the same time. I felt like I had got a bit stuck. I wasn't feeling super confident of exactly how I was going to do every part of Gilliman. It really gave me some chance to build something different and I got very excited about how to work out how to defy gravity and whatnot. So I will do a video on that build another time. So creating the Emperor, the the throne and the throne and the model itself were good, but like a little like, underwhelming compared to the rest of this. I wanted to have balance with Gilliman down the bottom and the Emperor, his father, sitting above. I used another like brass blank, but a much larger one so that it would match up to the one below uh, and then this one I really kind of went absolutely wild on all of the cables I really wanted to hark back to a lot of the original art of uh, the Emperor on the Golden Throne who knows what it really looks like but this is uh, I liked this representation a lot and using kind of lots of layers here I feel like gives it a very intense gothic look to it which I really like and I think matches up to the impact the original skeleton had um, but in a different way. Building the Emperor on as well I, I wanted it to be proud of the model because you can see very much on the artwork that you can see very much that this column of light is coming down and it's stuck out proud from the rest of the image with this lovely shape with the statues holding the different flags sourcing all the flags is a nightmare and loads of people help me with this uh, so it's a mixture of it's a mixture of, sort of some, some elder flag uh, Aldari flags from the aspect warrior kits and Perian flags from the tempestus scions kits they're really really great kind of shape to them and um, i then did uh, one of my favorite sort of tiny modeling things is basically putting a cutting the back of a skull off sticking it onto a watch cog and then putting maybe a bit of scroll work underneath i think it's a lovely sort of religious icon-esque image and I use I use it over and over and over again in my work. I think also as well you can see how uh, like when I've come across different bits so I got some extra sisters bits and a lot of the like mortifiers or something and I was like oh, okay these are cool like horrible grimdark parts and I will just include these as well. Then looking at the model as a whole I realized that it really had this huge gap around the edges. Um, I thought that I could just leave them blank but actually the more I I looked at the model the worse it looked and it started to stress me out a lot <laughs> so you know I was just like great uh, this is a really section that I wish I'd 
done in advance because fitting these pieces on was a real nightmare. What I did was I used brass strip on the bases and the top just to give it kind of like a bit of texture that was already there. Uh, and then I created these like small like greebling objects. And um, you can see kind of the volume of these that I made. They're really fun, like short, small, creative clip bashes. I wanted each one to be look like a kind of piece of grimdark technology, a bit like some of the workings of the Golden Throne that would then be joined up by cabling and by other pieces. And that way, rather than just sticking things on top of each other, it looks like it's just it looks like it's more designed because you have these like these moments. I was a little bit concerned that if I if I built out too far, it would really just detract from the wider model but there's so much going on and there's so many larger pieces that actually I think it, I think it kind of worked out well I wasn't I still am not entirely clear on who it is but we think it's Chaplin Cassius so I found an old model of him had to redo his legs because he looked a bit funny uh, this is the only uh, mini marine all the rest of them are like my own kind of true scale marines or primaris I know people are going to hate that but actually like the scale is much better so <laughs> it's fine I wanted to use originally like like a mixture of Primaris and OG Marines, but putting them together, they just the original ones look so small and out of place that uh, it really didn't work. And the Marines that I ended up putting onto it are like quite a lot taller than <laughs> Primaris anyway. So yeah, it's good. So we found out who Cassius was. He's there. I've got some extra, I've got another Custodes in the corner, which is not really in the picture, but I thought kind of gave it a nice balance. And we haven't really talked about Call. Call is one of the closest models to how he should, how he, you make him normally. I left off some some of his weapons and his staff. This is one of the areas where I'm least, least happy about it because his sculpt is so perfect, but he's a really very different scale in the image. He's he sort of towers over Celestine, and actually I haven't quite got the depth here in like how everything fits together. Although I think Celestine then works with Gilliman, and Gilliman works with. Uh, your brain, I'm talking about your brain. <laughs> so these these things can be, it's difficult to get distracted by them, but this is the thing that I'm always looking at when I'm creating the model, is trying to make sure that everything fits in proportion next to each other. I also added some doves <laughs> to uh, the top of Gilliman's, uh, the Ultramarine because logo, because I thought that was cool. When I added, so I added all the characters to the scene, your brain, like it looked a bit stupid that her skirt kind of like went so far off the back so I cut that off and then I had it like draped down did a little bit of green stuff work on that it's not my best work it's a little bit shonky um unfortunately I, you know just have to sometimes lump it I added quite a lot of ribbons over the top of that to hide the like bad work that I've done not sure how successful it was but she is going to be mostly in shadow it really is just like her head and crest that it's going to be like have the most visual impact all the way through this I'm planning to paint it exactly like the artwork so I don't have to make sure that each piece is you know completely perfect and I can't paint anywhere near the like golden demon standard so there's no point in me trying so uh, for me this is a it's an artwork based on painting with like painting with oil paints which is very a style that I love and it's lots of broad strokes so hopefully I can create that visual impact over the whole model then made the selection of marines for the front I really agonized over this I found it very hard like it's quite difficult to find to, there's no parade marines right like there aren't marines that all standing exactly a parade so I made my own these are like abominations that are a mixture of ultramarines orgewell's 30k chests tartarus terminator legs custodies uh, shoulder pads the biggest other shoulder pads that I could find lots of purity scrolls and extra kind of scroll work as well I'm, I actually really enjoyed making this I haven't really made many marines before and I enjoyed making like how chunky they are but when coming up to kind of like finishing details I wanted to add in some 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 other like little secrets and I got the Warhammer Plus Assassin so uh, I thought it'd be great to have a Vindicare Assassin stuck up in the corner is he looking at Euphrain? Is he working for the Inquisition and looking at Gilliman? Lots of stress in the Imperium at, in this particular moment. I, I, I really enjoyed putting him up, up there. The flags that I'm denied about, I ended up using the same uh, bit of brass strip that I previously had. I, I feel like it kind of moved in the right way. Um, it's not. It doesn't take paint that nicely, so the, the paint, uh, the base coat over it is very kind of peppered and you can see some of the glue on it so I'm gonna when I paint that with oil paints I'm gonna try using I'm gonna use some very thick and try and create a kind of like velvety texture to make it appear much more as if it's cloth now the in the artwork I think they're slightly further away so that they are really aren't illuminated at all it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to paint it 
capturing the illusion of uh, a central pillar of light without painting too much color on them. We'll see how I uh, manage that. Right, so this is a moment I'm kind of like working out exactly how, like what, whether or not I need some extra details on core sections. Uh, I thought it'd be really nice stairs have like this, lo this lovely carpet on the, on the artwork. So I put in brass. It looks lovely. It looks really nice on here. Doesn't look so nice once it's base coated again. It's like really annoying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes sometimes you just get away you just don't get away with the textures that you want so yeah, it's, yeah um, it is a little bit annoying but it's fine I also added in Cypher somebody somebody suggested there's a, there's a mysterious dark angel in the front row somebody suggested that maybe it was Cypher I then base coated it in uh, I then base coated it in pure black and wraith bone so which which gives it that nice uh it gives it slightly warmer warmer tone than using pure white and it means that i can highlight up from that it also means that when i paint colors on it they're not going to be quite so desaturated and i really want to capture some of the warmth in this i took some fancy photographs of it i had a few people ask me just for some pictures of the pure black and white image so that you've got something you can use a phone background very happy to do that if you want to buy a poster of it i am planning to sell those as well i've got had a few requests just drop me a message and i'll put you on the short list and I'll, I'll contact you as soon as i've got that sorted because i haven't got that sorted yet that is how i built and got it already. Thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you learned some things about it. If you've got any questions about any part of the build or any of the different things on it, I'm really happy to chat to you about it. Um, it's been an absolute massive labor of love. Uh, like I really love the original art and I hope that I've captured it at all. I think I feel like it does have like a very strong visual impact and trying to get the paintwork to match up to that, <laughs> it feels very stressful to me right now. <laughs> but I have made a bit of progress and I'm aiming to get it done before Christmas. Yeah. So that's really cool. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, please like and subscribe so that I can get some extra internet points, which make me feel very happy.